Hi friends! So today we are going to close out and reconcile my February 2020 budget. I have never done this in real time before here on my channel, though I've been sharing my budgets for years. I usually futz around in it and then show it to you once it's done, but I figured it might help to actually see how I actually reconcile it. So this is my wallet. These are my most recent receipts and what I do is I mostly use cards and I keep them in my wallet. I do keep some cash in here, but if I use cash, I put it in the same way I would a card transaction. I keep all of my receipts, I put them in my wallet and then my wallet clears out when I am reconciled. So I usually do this on Fridays, but I was out last week, Friday. So today it is Monday night and I am putting in all of my receipts for the last week and a half-ish, I had to go to a conference, so I'm a little over. And back when I started budgeting, I did this every day. And that was to keep myself on budget. Now my budget has a little bit more wiggle room in it, and also I've been doing this for six years, so I kind of know if I'm spending more than normal or less than normal, but I still make sure to account for every single dollar that comes in and out because that lets me meet my money goals. Let's get into it. By the way, if you don't know me and if you're brand new here, who's this girl talking about budgets? I'm Sarah, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and I paid off $33,000 of student loan debt on a tiny reporter's salary of $26,000 in just three years. Now I am in a much better financial situation. I have a huge emergency fund and I'm about to buy my first multifamily property. And the secret, I'll tell you right now, to all of it was keeping a budget. <laughs> it may not sound fun, but I guarantee you it is not as bad as you think. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to show you how to do it and completely master your money. So on screen right now, I'm going to show you the actual budget that I use every single month. This has evolved over time, but this is the one I'm using currently, and it has all of my bills, every all of my income that's coming in, all of my business expenses and income is in here too, as well as uh, like what my boyfriend pays is up here to live with me since we split bills. Um, and let's just go through this. By the way, I actually sell a version of this budget on my Etsy store. It's Budget Girl Goods. It's only $5, which is like nothing. And this budget has had six years of product testing. <laughs> so tons of you guys use it. You love it. I will link it down below. So, so this is my February 2020 budget. My rent stays the same, car insurance, phone, um, gas, and some of these other boxes in the middle. So gas, uh, electrical, groceries, personal, restaurant, and clothing all kind of are flexi. So I put in my electrical here, it was $173.31 this month, but I split that with my boyfriend. So I only take out half of that, and then he gets the other half up here, and then he pays me half of our rent and internet and electricity. So. Um, and then gas, groceries, personal, restaurant, and clothing all uh, get reported in these outlier boxes here. Now, you can make a budget, and I made this mistake when I very first started, was I made just this a budget like this blue box here, and then I tried to go in and edit the numbers whenever I made a purchase, <laughs> which did not work because I couldn't remember whether I had put in the numbers or not. So what I do now is I have these little boxes of my spending categories and anytime I spend money, I put it in here and these auto total to the bottom and then report into this box here and it all auto populates. So I can see at a glance how much over or under I am in each budgeting category. So for instance, I budget $300 for groceries and household. Um, so far this month, I have only spent 159. There's some groceries and household receipts in here, so we're gonna get to that. Um, restaurant, clothing, etc., all out there. I also pay for Hulu and a gym subscription. Actually, you know what? I stopped the chiropractor. Stopped the chiropractor, so I'm actually just gonna take that out. That's one less expense we have to deal with this month. So um, let's see. 
And then also, all right, let's move on to the next box. The savings box here. Um, I save almost 40%, save and invest 40% of my income, which is amazing. I'm so lucky to be able to do that. But you can actually see where my savings goes and all of these are auto payment sinking funds. So $50 every single month goes to long-term savings. $100 every month goes to Christmas savings, et cetera, car repair, travel, Rory. So sinking funds mean that I have these little savings buckets that come into play whenever an expense comes up for them. So Rory goes to the vet like once a year, that money gets paid out once a year. All that money came out of there so it didn't actually affect my normal budget. And then uh, investments down here. I have a new home investments because that's the big thing that I am saving for right now. Um, I have a Roth IRA at Wealth Simple. I have a Roth IRA at Vanguard. And I have just a to be determined investing category. I just kind of throw that money wherever I want. All right, and then down here, just so you know what's going on, this is my YouTube income and my YouTube expenses. Super simple spreadsheet here. It makes tax time super easy. And uh, as you can see, I made 475 from AdSense and then I had an affiliate, some affiliates and a sponsorship payout. I actually had a really fantastic month in February. I made $3,169 from Budget Girl. Um, two of those were from old video sponsorships that did not pay out. Those are actually from last year and they paid out in February. And then I have these expenses, internet, Canva, person who does my pinning for me, the person who does my newsletter. I did a, oh, actually that was only $80. Uh, I got, had a student take some photographs of me because I needed a new headshot and I got some HDMI cords. Oh, and the big one here, $2,000. I had to pay a lawyer a lot of money so that I can get my trademark uh, approved. Uh, people keep trying to steal my, my name that I've been operating with on the internet for six years. And uh, so I'm trying to get it trademarked. It's been harder than I originally thought. So I had to pay $2,000 as a uh, deposit for a lawyer. So that's fun. <laughs> All right, but let's jump in with the receipt. All right, so first off, HEB for $52.14. So I type in 53, I use something called acorns which rounds up all of my card transactions to the next dollar and saves that amount i don't necessarily know if it's worth it but i do have almost 300 dollars in that account but i also also been using acorns for like a year so i can't say whether i recommend that or not but uh it does make saving just that little bit just a little bit easier and i usually put in the date on there as well and once i have the receipt logged I just put it away and then I get to throw it away. We also have $77 for Walmart. Now in this, some of this stuff is household and some is groceries. I am doing okay. Sometimes I would separate these, but for right now, I'm just gonna throw them all in groceries. It's fine. Um, I went to Aldi and I spent $10 to do that. And that's why you do this all at once. Okay. And it goes pretty fast. All right. And it looks like at Target, I bought dog shoes, Nyla Bones, coasters, and deck wall pan. And I don't even know what that is, but it's uh, going to go under personal. And what I really hate is this right here. Like when I see 31 and for some reason this little element box got deleted and I don't know what that is, but I'm going to assume I did spend $31 on something that belongs there. <laughs> it happens rarely, but it does, of course, in the one that I'm showing you guys. So uh, let's see, we also have another Walmart one, $24. And then, oh, I went to a Oh, we went into, dang it. <laughs> okay, so I did a real fantastic job of just putting in a bunch of uh, stuff that belongs in March and February, but that happens. So I'm gonna delete those real quick, or actually I can probably just copy them out. And let's drop down to March. So we're at the very beginning of March here, that works. 
And I have to fill these back in. Just ignore the woman behind the curtain. There we go, good as new. And we did Target as well. I'm just gonna delete that and put it in the, okay. So these, <laughs> so these are my February receipts for the very last bit of February. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. So I went to Taco Casa and I spent $11. So, all right, so this is all of my receipts, all in for the very last week of, or last few days of February, first few days of March. Those can now be thrown away because they're put in, and that means that it is time to close out my February budget. So, what I do is I scroll through everything real quick, and I make sure that nothing, uh, like, stands out. I look for, I look down in the clothing line, see if maybe I returned anything. Um, I look to make sure there's nothing weird like this $31 going on, which I no longer know what it is, but okay. Uh, <laughs> and I go to Amazon to check and make sure that any of the purchases that I made in the month that I'm budgeting here are in here, um, which I did earlier. And I also check PayPal to see if any payments came in or if I paid anything out of PayPal that haven't been reconciled in here yet. I will say when I am actually making online purchases, I generally immediately put that in my budget just so I don't forget. It takes one second. And if I don't, I know myself and I know if I don't have a physical receipt, I will forget about that purchase. So I always get a receipt. I always put it in my wallet. I usually often go into my bank account and kind of scroll through and make sure that there aren't any nothing got swiped that didn't get a receipt for and it's just kind of a double check system none of us are perfect but if your budget doesn't balance at the end of the day and you're missing some money or you have a bunch of extra money you do have to go back in there and kind of check so staying on top of it i can't say enough like making sure that you're logging everything in at least every week really makes a huge difference so um now let's say i've done all of that because i'm pretty sure i have um, I've checked Amazon, I've checked PayPal. All of my notes go up here in this little section. I did get a $500 bonus from work that was already sent to the house fund. I had $100 from Vincent Beth for my birthday, also sent to my house fund. And then I paid out $687 for a tire. Now you notice that's not in this normal budget here because that is something that comes from my sinking funds. So remember that car repair replace fund? What I did at the time, um, I went ahead and just swiped my card. And then when I got home, I took the $687 and I pulled it from my car sinking fund into my normal account. Once everything is here and all of these boxes report out into here, we can actually look and see that I am under for once on groceries and household. I did go to a conference, which means I think Jacob took one more week than uh, was normal for him to buy groceries because he was pretty much here alone and then in personal i was over by two dollars in restaurant i was under and in clothing i was over those all pretty much even out and then we have everything down and my total left over from my regular budget was 389 dollars and 98 cents that's actually going to go down here so that was left over from my normal budget now, this is a zero base budget in that I account for every dollar that comes in and I give every dollar a job sending it out. So every dollar that I got this month will go somewhere by the time we close this budget. So these, this main box is pretty much structured around my main job income. So I made $2,947.77 uh, $2, at my job. So I make sure that all of my uh, expenses and even my savings and investings are covered out of that. I consider budget girl income and outside income kind of extra. Um, and because you also never know when you're gonna have expenses for that, like an expensive lawyer or have to save for taxes. So I like to keep that money kind of uncommitted for the moment. So, um, and then as we said here, oh, there was also Jacob's birthday. As you can see, I did go in and uh, log the receipts 
And did I do anything with this money? 579.30. Let's check real quick. Okay, so we're gonna take that from travel in a second. Travel and gifts works. Um, or I could take the over it or what's left over. Let's do that. I'll be less from the travel budget. Okay, so this may seem like pandemonium to you guys. You're <laughs> just gonna have to trust me. So 579, 30 minus 389.98 equals 189. left over equals 189.32 from travel fund and then that means we delete this from here and say see Jacob B day box all right so uh, 189.32 we're just gonna log in here real quick okay so we're in my travel fund uh, I don't mind you guys seeing this is $835 in it because like I said, I um, put $100 in that every single month and that travel can mean personal. It could mean for uh, Jacob's birthday, we went to Houston for the weekend, went to the opera. It was kind of terrible, but we were told we had a bad opera. So, and then I'm just going to transfer these funds to my regular account, 189.32. Transfer, and then my travel fund's a little less, but the funds originally came out of my um, just checking account, so that means that we're balancing the money that's in there is supposed to be. So, back to the budget. All right, so I made $3,169.26 off of Budget Girl this month, and I spent 2322 which left me with $846.66 left. This is what happens and this is why I keep that uh, budget just kind of flex in case I need it because big expenses come up when you're a small business owner. So what is left is 846.65 and then I essentially just decide what to do with it. So this says sent to and we're gonna say and this is in case I want to break it out and I don't. I want to send the entire thing to new home and then I'm going to go back to my checking account and then I'm going to transfer money out of the main account into the savings account that I am designating right now for new home. So that is an extra $846.65 to the house fund. Yay! That's not nothing at all. And this also means that my February budget is completely closed. So every dollar in accounted for, every dollar out accounted for. Um, so I know that all of my expenses are in here for that I did for the entire month. Um, things have been moved around as needed. Like I said, this is probably a little more complicated than your budget needs to be. Um, you can take this or a template like this and customize it completely to your needs. If this makes your brain go, hmm, there are apps. <laughs> There's a free app called Every Dollar that I am not associated with at all. I like notes. I like being able to say, um, see my percentages and where things go, and I like to really get in there. And if this budget does appeal to you, like I said, it is for sale on Etsy for $5. <laughs> if you like it. If not, I will not be offended. Lots of people like it though. Now what I also do is I duplicate this every single month and then I just clear out the old information and I make it for a new month. So there's actually an empty one sitting right here, uh, just ready to go. And all the instructions on completely how to use this also come with the budget on Etsy. I did a huge, it's like an 11 page thing that, that shows you step by step exactly how to use it. I'm updated on my budgets and that was what I spent in February and how I reconcile. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you subscribed. And if you have any questions about how I did this, which I would understand if you did, go ahead and ask them in the comments below. I will try my best to answer them either in the comments or in a future video. And if you enjoyed this at any point, including watching me mess up, I would love it if you liked this video because, well, because isn't she cute? 
She doesn't care as long as I budget for dog treats. Anyway, I will see you guys next time. Bye.